Hello, I'm Robin Vincent and welcome to Molten Modular. Today, we're looking at the analog solutions Treadstone. Here's a little mini synth, it's a mono synth. It's a fully analog synthesizer available either as this rather sort of natty desktop unit or it's also available as a Eurorack module. But for the purposes of this, I'm gonna stick with the desktop one because it's just so darn cute. And the two are completely identical except for the orange stripe, which is a shame because the orange stripe is awesome and it's and it's not on the Eurorack module, but well, there we go. But that's probably gonna be my only criticism of this little fella because it is flipping fantastic. Now what I've discovered over playing with it for the last few days is that it's, uh, it's slightly unruly, I think is the best way to describe it. It doesn't do everything perfectly that you kind of might expect it to because we get so used to synthesizers being part of some kind of digital realm, some whole, some perfection, all this shooting to get everything exactly as it should be. Whereas this doesn't really pay any attention to that. It goes all over the place in really interesting ways so that you're never entirely sure exactly what you're gonna get, but every time <laughs> you play with it, it's extremely pleasing. It's based on old technology, old analog technology. Everything about it is analog. And so it has the vibe of an old synth. An old synth, which is a bit kind of, oh, it might be crackly there. Oh, it might sort of go a bit weird there. Oh, wow, that's not quite what I, oh, that sort of vibe is what you get from it. But it's enormously fun. And none of this old vibe takes anything away from the sound. In fact, if anything, it adds to the character. Because this is about character. And the Treadstone has it in spades. So let's make some sound. Well, you can make sound in several ways. We'll start off with just a drone, so it doesn't have to be connected to anything else. And we'll just play with that. Switch a little switch to drone, switch this to envelope. And there we go. So that's just the filter sweep then. So what do you get? Let's just leave the filter open for the moment. So over here on the oscillator section, you've got oscillator pitch, of course. You then got a wave mix between triangle and square. You can also switch in either noise or a sub. Whoa, that's really nice. So that's a really fat sound all by itself. The only effects I've got on in my rig is just a little bit of reverb going through the system here. Otherwise that's all Treadstone. So the analog filter is a 24 dB filter. 
It's quite fierce. And you hear that drop as you turn the resonance up. A little bit. And then it starts. Ooh. Next you get the envelope generator. There's only a single one and it's kind of sort of doubles up itself. You've got an attack, obviously, which you're not going to hear with a drone. We'll sort that in a minute. And then you've got this decay release, which is sort of on the same knob. And then you've got a sustain level as well. So what we can do is we can set the envelope to loop. So then it sort of plays itself. and the speed of that loop is set by the LFO. Now you can of course set the envelope also to the filter, which is this little knob here. So all at once you've got this grit and you've got this drive, it's really being pushed. And you've got the ringing of these tones and harmonics coming in. And you know that you could be writing a tune with that cut off. sort of underworld at the moment. Now there's this little circuit at the end of the chain called reflect and this is this kind of weird delay. It's less of a delay, more of like standing in a room with very reflective surfaces and having it the sound bang back at you. So it's not a sort of delay, it's a bit more but it also descends into chaos and feedback really, really easily, which is fantastic. Let me see if I can demonstrate that if I bring that back up. So you've got two knobs, one is the length 
and one is the amount of feedback. And then the VCA knob over here gives you a mix between the two. So if we stick it somewhere like halfway, you can hear that, yeah? And I can up the feedback. starts to ring rather nicely. Awesome. See, it's not a polite delay. It's not a delay that goes, oh, that's nice, tinkle, tinkle. This is a whack delay. Doing. And that is it. Sort of. But there's another button down here, just by the output, that's called Bypass. And what this does is takes some of the original signal, some of the oscillator, and sticks it straight to the output. Just like that. You know, not messing about, there's no mixing knob or anything like that. It just takes a chunk of it, throws it to the output, which means you get the original sound, the original sound source, either noise or the waveform, on top of your filtered and affected version. And what that really means is that you get this tone going on, either triangle or square, alongside the filtered version. So it makes it sound like there's two things going on. You know what I mean? Or it can be noise. Now there's one more function that I haven't talked about yet before we get down into the patch base side of things, and that's the pulse width modulation. It does have a bit of it, and you can choose for that to be affected either by the envelope, there's without, drop it in, that's quite nice, or you can get it done on the LFO. I put this back to drone,
and that's the LFO slowly moving it about. Now the LFO is slightly too big, I think, because it pushes it all the way to, if you imagine, um, uh, pulse width, pulse width, pulse width like this. It goes, and then it makes it so small that it drops away. So I think it's a shame, it'd be nice just to, that ends up making a, a sort of a hole in your sound, which in some ways might be something that you want. So you get that kind of rhythm going on. I don't know, do you? Maybe. It's getting a bit Terminator 2, Judgment Day, isn't it? Lovely, and it is lovely. It's flipping lovely. It's just a brilliant little box. Now, I know what you're thinking. Those knobs are all really quite small and the switches are a bit annoying. Yeah, yeah, they are. I mean, it's in this wonderfully small, compact package. You're getting a heck of a lot of stuff in there, which of course, which is why it translates really nicely to Eurorack. And we're used to fiddly knobs in Eurorack, I guess. But there's, I mean, there's no doubt that the, the layout and the little knobs are not as awesome as you'd like them to be. I mean, they could, they're rigid, they're fine, they're not going anywhere. It's well made, it's tough and rough, and you can get in there, but of course, the little knobs are a little bit faffy. But, you know, we find that on a, on a lot of things, and I don't want that to take away from the fun, because it doesn't really, because you start, you know, you just get in there, and, and once you're in there, you're in there, man, you know? So now what we should probably do is jam some modulation and a sequence in there just to see what we do with that. Well, I happen to have, knocking around, this old fella here, an Analog Solutions uh, Generator Sequencer. So let's stuff that in and see if we can get a bit of a tune going. So, to, in order to make this work, over here in the patch bay at the bottom, you have got two inputs, interestingly, for the VCO, one with an attenuator. You've then got an input called duty for the pulse width. I have no idea why it's called that. Uh, stick it in the comments if you know. And then you've got a square wave output. So you can use an output from this to something else. I'll just take the square wave itself straight out if you want to. You've then got two outputs for the LFO, slightly strange, weirdy LFO. You've then got an audio input and a clock input, which is for the sequencer, which we'll come on to in a little bit. Then you've got two inputs again for the VCF, one with an attenuator. You've got an envelope trigger and an envelope output. So that's the stuff at the bottom and we'll start plugging things in to see what that does. First of all, let's plug something into the pitch input, like so. And then we also need to gate it. So we're gonna stick that into the envelope trigger. 
let's take that out of envelope looping. And with a bit of luck, we should have something going on. And then what we can do is take some modulation out of a third channel and stick that into, say, the filter. Thank you. 
I don't know if you're having as much fun as I am, but this thing is flipping phenomenal. So, I mean, the other thing you can do, of course, is jam another oscillator into it just to, to do a bit of FM kind of thing. So I guess I could take the output of the other treadstone and jam that into here. I've got something truly fabulous going on here. take something from somewhere else. Yeah. Right, got to move it along. So 
an extraordinary amount of sound being pulled out of one little tiny weeny little synthesizer. So like I say, grimy, gritty, unruly, kind of unfathomable in that it just goes, and then it goes, ah, oh, and then it goes squeak, and then it goes, Whoa, and you just keep sticking stuff in and messing it about, and it just takes you on another journey. It's like I can't find the end. I can't find the end. So have I done all the sound check? No, I don't think I have, because there's, there's going to be another one, and then there'll be another one. Yeah. It's nice. Now there's another whole area that I haven't even looked at yet, and that's MIDI. Because this has relatively simple MIDI implemented, but it's there. And there's one particular, no, two particular features that make that interesting. The first one is that you can map the velocity to the cutoff. And the second one is that it has a 16 step MIDI sequencer built in, which is so ridiculously simple that you won't really believe it. <laughs> Let me plug the MIDI in first and I'll show you what I mean. So to get this to work, I'm going to use my old friend, my bass station. So you can play it like a normal synth, yeah? But you have this control here. And that has control over the filter if I turn it up. depending on how hard I play it. So MIDI sort of lends it a whole other dimension. I remember I said the sequencer was stupidly simple. Well, it is because it records the last 16 notes that you played. So if you take a clock, any clock, so for instance, you can take its own LFO, stick that into the clock. It'll play whatever it was I last played. That's rather good. Oh yeah. And it'll take the velocity as well. doesn't matter what you do, you end up back at a fabulous place. some other notes in.
I've got to stop. <laughs> I've got to stop. Right, stop, stop, stop. Right, otherwise I'll be here all night. I can't be here all night. I have other things to do. So, Treadstone from Analog Solutions. What a phenomenal little box. Look at that, it's only this big. It's a tiny wee little thing. But it's full of loveliness in a grimy, gritty, but then suddenly it comes up with this really pure stuff and bleepy stuff and bloopy stuff and then bubbly stuff, then noisy stuff, then gritty stuff again, then lumpy stuff. It's just got lots of stuff. So yeah, yeah, I'm liking that. Now, of course, with any synth, you can have a good time if you try hard enough, but I found this to be real, relatively easy going. When I first got hold of it, when I first played with it, I wasn't entirely sure. I found the layout a bit confusing. I found the labeling a bit confusing. But after spending a couple of hours with it today, oh, it's just a fabulous little thing. It really is. Now, where does it sit amongst everybody else's sort of monosynth? I mean, is it a Mother 32? Is it an Rebus? Is it an Uno or a Microfreak or a Crave, which are uh, synthesizers that I've played with recently? Well, I would put this closest, probably. Now, I don't think Analog Solutions is gonna like me for this, but it's very similar to the Crave. It has that meatiness, it has that boldness, and it's full of old style synthesis. I guess that puts it next to the Mother 32 in similarness as well, although the Mother 32 is a, just feels more behaved. It's a nice thing. The Mother 32 is, is well behaved, it's polite, it's nice, and, and, and does all the things you're expected to do in a warm, sort of smiley way. This, not so much. This goes all over the place. It really teases you into different areas and different things going on. And that's what it does. That's where the grit comes from. That's where the, the, the beefiness and the meat comes from. And that's enormously pleasing. Uh, Price-wise, this is 349 XFAT, so about 400 quid. I think the Eurorack version is that little bit cheaper. And so it does put it in the sort of arena of the Erebus from Dreadbox. And it's probably about right, I think. So overall, my only disappointment really is that this orange stripe doesn't appear on the Eurorack module. I don't know why they did that, why did they do that? I don't know. Well, I hope that's been helpful. That's a Dreadstone. And there's a brand new synth coming from Analog Solutions very, very soon, which I should have a play on tomorrow. And in the meantime, Go make some tunes.